Hello and welcome to today's Heritage Help video where we'll be talking about researching the history of your house. My name is Alice, I'm the Heritage Librarian with Hobson's Bay Libraries and today I'll be taking you through a variety of online resources available for researching the history of your home. Since Hobson's Bay City Council is located in Victoria, this video will be most useful for those of you living in Victoria and particularly in Melbourne, but nonetheless some of the information in this video will be useful to you regardless of where you might be in Australia. All of the resources we're going to look at today are available online, so as long as you have a PC and access to the internet at home, this is all research you can do from your own home. All the websites used in this video will be listed on the screen at the end of the video in case you miss writing down the names or the addresses, and I'll also be linked in the video's description if you're watching this on YouTube. Before we get started, I just have a couple of tips on the best way to go about researching your house. The first of these is something that's very useful but often overlooked, and that is to ask your neighbours what they know. Often your neighbours will have been living in the street for a long time, and they'll have a lot of information that isn't available written down or online about who has lived in your home. And the second tip is to always start with what you know and work backwards. Because the numbering of streets can often change and similar things like that, it's best to start with facts you know and ensure you're working from something you know into something you don't know to avoid accidentally researching the wrong house because it has the same number as the house you now live in. With those tips out of the way, let's get started. The first site I'm going to show you today is the State Library of Victoria's website. So to start off, I'm just going to click in this search bar up the top here. I'm just using Google Chrome as my web browser, but you can use whatever browser you're comfortable with, whether that's Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Safari, whatever you're familiar with using. And in this top bar here, I'm just going to type State Library of Victoria and press enter. And I'm just going to do a single click on that first link there. So the State Library of Victoria has a whole lot of historic maps which are very useful for seeing things like when your house was built, if you're lucky they may even have the name of who owned your house at the time, and other similar information. So to find those maps, I'm going to click in this drop down menu up here, click on that little arrow there, and I'm going to choose maps from that menu. And then in this box here to the left of that, I'm going to type in the name of what I'm interested in looking up. So I'll be typing the name of the street I'm researching. For example, I might be researching a house in Electra Street. And it's a good idea to also include either the name of the suburb, so I might type Williamstown here, or the name of an intersecting street, just to make sure you're finding the right Electra Street. There may be other Electra Streets around Victoria and I don't want to accidentally find maps on the wrong one. So as you can see here, I'm going to type in Electra Ferguson and that way I'm going to find maps that are including both an Electra and a Ferguson Street. So now I'm just going to press search here and a list of maps should come up. It can be a bit slow to load. And here we go, we have a Melbourne Metropolitan Board of Works detailed plan. And if I scroll down a little bit with the bar on the side, I can see that this detailed plan is from 1905. So the Melbourne Metropolitan Board of Works from the 1890s until all the way up until the 1990s managed things like sewerage and water supply and those things in Melbourne. And they created a lot of really good and really detailed maps that are incredibly useful for researching your home. So those maps can include street numbers and as I mentioned before it's very useful to keep an eye on street numbers and make sure if they've changed you're looking at the right house. They can also include what houses are existing and what blocks are vacant. They can include the name of your house and they can include some information about the construction of your house, what it was built out of. So these maps are a really valuable resource. So now that I've noted down what year I'm looking at, 1905, I'm going to just click available online here and that's going to open up that map so we can have a look. And here is the map in question. So right now it's very hard to see and I'm just going to use this plus button down here to zoom in and get a better look. 
comes up a bit blurry at first, but if you wait a moment, it will come into focus. Now I've zoomed in, I can also drag the map around. So I just click here and drag it down and I can see all the different parts of Electra Street. Now, one thing to note up here, and I'm on the corner of Electra Street and Ferguson Street here, is to have a look at this street numbering. So I can see the house on the corner is number 77, then we're moving down to 75 and 73. Now, if you know Electra Street now, you'll know that's not the numbering that exists now. So if I just open up a new tab, I'm just going to click this plus button here. I'm going to have a look at Google Maps, and you don't need to follow along this too closely, so I'm just using this to demonstrate. I'm going to go into Google Maps, and I'm going to go and have a quick look at Electra Street today. And here we are at the corner of Electra and Ferguson Street today, and you can see that the numbering has changed. So now we're looking at 83 to 85 on the corner, then 65 and 63. So for example, if I was researching 63 Electra Street, which is now Williamstown Physiotherapy, I would have to be aware that I'm actually looking at number 73 if I'm looking back in 1905, and it's a good idea to keep an eye on when that changes. Um, so that's one example. I'm just going to open up another example now to show you some of the other information that can be found through these maps. So we'll close that one, and I'll close my Google Maps as well, and now we're back here on my original search. I'm just going to drag this bar to scroll back up to the top, click in this search bar, I'm just going to press the backspace key to delete everything that's in there so far, and we're going to try another street in the area. So let's try Salisbury Street. And this time, as I said, you can search the name of the suburb or an intersecting street, so I'm going to try searching for Salisbury Williamstown. I'm just going to press enter there, and here we go into the search. I'm going to scroll down again, and here we have a, another map of Williamstown. As you can see, we've got a few different ones, and I'm going to have a look at this 1938 one today. So I'm just click, going to click on Available Online there. Give it to a minute to load. can be very, very slow. And now on this map we can see there weren't many houses on Salisbury Street. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we'll see what was there. Wait till this becomes a bit clearer. And one thing you can notice in this one is you're seeing the name of a house. So for example, if you were interested, I know I searched for Salisbury, but we can look at Melrose Street now. If you were interested in this house on Melrose Street, you would see that this house was known as Lauriston. And another thing you can notice about many of these houses is they have these horizontal stripes. Now, what do these horizontal stripes mean? These stripes are actually part of the MMBW maps key, which tells you what a building is constructed of. And you can find that key available online. So if I open up a new tab, I'm going to press the plus button here, and we're going to type into this box. So we're looking at MMBW maps, and what I want is the legend. So I've just typed MMBW Maps Legend into there. I'm going to press Enter. And we're on the State Library of Victoria. And so we're going to click on this first one here. As you can see, slb.vic. That's coming from the State Library of Victoria. So that's going to be what we want. And now I'm going to scroll down, down a bit more. And we can see these legends. This one's quite clear. So we'll have a look at this one to tell us what different patterns on the houses mean. So stripes indicate a weatherboard building. So if we click back over here into our map, you can see most of the houses in this area in the 1930s when we're looking at were built out of weatherboard. And I can drag the map around and have a look at what else was in the area and see that pretty much every building at this time in this part of Williamstown was a weatherboard building. So that's a good way to know if the house you're living in is the one that is shown on the map and therefore existed at the time. So for example, if I knew my house was made of brick and I could see the house on the map was made of wood, I know that my house was built after the date that that map was published. So that's a useful way to find some information about your house. 
as well as that if you have found out the name of your house for example I found Lauriston house there on Melrose Street that gives you an additional term you can use later on when searching as well as your address you can also search for the house name you may search for example Lauriston Williamstown to discover more information about your house So that's what can be found on the State Library maps. And just before we move on, I'm just going to show you how to save those maps so you can have a look at them later. So we're just going to use this button down in the corner here, this arrow pointing downwards, and that's the download button. You can choose to save a small version of the map or a large version of the map. Now the large files are very big, they do take a long time to download, but they are much clearer and if you're keeping these for a permanent record about the history of your family I would encourage you to save a large file but it will depend on how fast your internet connection is and how much space you have on your computer uh, so I'm just going to download a small file for example today and it opens up the file like this and then what I have to do is I have to right click so I'm using the right button of my mouse to click this time I'm just going to click save image as and then I have the opportunity to save it as whatever I want. We'll just save it to my desktop and I might call it Salisbury Street 1938. I'll click save and now that image is on my desktop whenever I want to go back and have a look at it without having to do the search again. So that's what's available through the State Library website. The next place that I would suggest you look is what's called the Sands and McDougal directories. Sands and McDougal, Sands and McDougal directories are once again available through the website of the State Library and these were a kind of a phone book back before phones existed so they're a directory of everyone who's living in Melbourne and they're organized by both surname which is useful if you're looking for a person and you already know their name but they're also organized by suburb and then by street so you can look up any street in Melbourne and you can find out who was living on that street in any given year and the State Library makes these available for every five years from around the 1860s onwards so 1860, 1865, 1870 you can go in and check every year and see who was living in your home so I'm just going to close out of these two things that I do have open I'm going to click back in the top bar here and delete all the text there because we're going to do a new search and I'm going to type in Sands and McDougall State Library of Victoria so Sands and McDougall State Library of Victoria and that search is going to find me those directories I'm going to click on the very first result here as you can see I spelled McDougal wrong but that's not a worry it still found it and this green button here which says Sands and McDougal directories is where I want to go so first of all what you have to do is choose which period of years you'd like to look at so it's a good idea to start with 1950 to 1974 but just for a demonstration today I'm going to start with an earlier one so let's start with 1860 to 1895 now if I scroll down here I can see all the different years that are available and as I said you can see this directory is for every five years and I'm going to choose 1895 and just press view now these directories can be a little tricky to navigate depending on what year you're in the contents on the left hand side is gonna look a little bit different um, but what you'll want is the one that's called something like street directory suburbs or suburban directory or something along those lines so that's this one here street directory suburbs I'm just gonna click on that little plus sign next to that and that will open up a few more options under there and as you can see here if I just scroll down so it's visible I've got an alphabetized list of all Melbourne suburbs and we're going to be looking for Williamstown so we're going to go right down the bottom of this list and we're seeing Williamstown in an alphabetical list falls between West Melbourne and Yarraville so I'm going to click on that one there West Melbourne to Yarraville once that's loaded we'll see it here in this window on the right hand side and now I'm going to want to scroll with this scroller on the right hand side and we're just going to keep going down until we get to Williamstown 
here we are in Williamstown. Let's check out. Um, say we were looking for Hotham Street. You can see all these streets are in alphabetical order. So we're moving from Cole Street to College Street to Collins Street. So if I was looking for Hotham Street, for example, I would just keep scrolling, keep scrolling, and eventually you find the street you're interested in. And here's Hotham Street here. And if I want to make that a bit bigger, I can just use these plus buttons here to zoom in. Scroll down a bit more and say I was interested in the house at 3 Hotham Street. I can see here I'm in, I'm in Hotham Street. Number 3 was occupied by a man named Augustus Lawson. Now this is just going to tell you who lived in the house. They may not be the owner of the house, they may be renting the house. Um, this is these lists are also useful because I can see that Augustus Lawson lived on the south side of Hotham Street between Douglas Parade and Queen Street. And that way I can go back and check that against the numbering today and check that that lines up. So you can check that out for any year ending in 5 or 0 all the way from 1860 right up to the 1970s. So that's a very useful way to gradually start putting together a chronological list of who lived in your home. Um, once you know the name of an occupant in your home, you can also start to find out some more details about them. And a lot of that research can be done through Ancestry. So I'm going to close out of this search. I'm just going to press the X up here and we're going to go to Ancestry. Now you may have heard of Ancestry as a subscription service, something that you have to pay for, but Ancestry is actually available for free within our library. So if you come in and use an, a library computer, you can access Ancestry for free. And it's also for the duration of this crisis while we're all staying in our homes. It's available for free from your personal computer at home via our library website. So I'm going to go to the Hobson's Bay Library website. I'm just going to click up here and type in Hobson's, oh, I spelled that wrong. Hobson's Bay Libraries. I'm going to click on the first result there. And all our family history and house history and local history resources are under this tab that says Discover. So I'm going to hover my mouse over Discover. You don't have to click there. And I'm going to click on Family History. And here you can see Ancestry.com. And as it says underneath, at home access is temporarily available while the libraries are closed due to COVID-19. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can click login from home. That will take you to our login page. You'll just have to put in your library card number, your library pin number, and then click show my details and you'll be able to get to Ancestry. I'm not going to demonstrate that today because I am on a Hobson's Bay computer, which means that my access is slightly different. So you would type in your details here. I'm just going to close out of this and click on Ancestry. And then I can click begin searching. So the really useful thing that you can find on Ancestry if you're interested in your house is rate records. Rate records provide information like how many rooms are in the house, who lived there, who owned the house, if the tenant and the occupier are two different people, what those people's occupations were, how much they were paying in rates to the council, all this kind of information. So you may remember just before I looked up number 3 Hotham Street and I discovered that that was occupied by a man named Augustus Lawson in the 1890s. So let's see what we can find out about Augustus. If I were to put in first name Augustus, and then I'm going to click here and put in his last name, Lawson. And then we're going to put in Williamstown, just because there could have been a lot of Augustus Lawsons in the world. And if you wait a moment after typing that, a menu will pop up and you'll have to choose which Williamstown you're referring to. Now, I can't see the bottom of the menu here, so I'm just going to have to scroll down on the right hand side and the very bottom you can see Williamstown, Victoria, Australia. That's the one I want, so I'll click on that. Then I'll just click this orange search button. And here we have Victoria Australia rate books. And we're seeing Augustus Lawson in the rate books. Um, 
Now, all of these will provide information about Augustus Lawson in different years. I'm going to click on this second one because I know this one's a bit easier to see and rate books can be quite hard to read. So I'm going to click here on view image and that's going to pull up the scan of the rate book page. And here's that rate book. As I said, they can be quite hard to read. This is a clearer one. So you'll have to be quite keen to decipher some cursor if you want to check out rate books. And as with the maps we saw earlier, I can drag this around to see different parts of the page and I can zoom in and out with these plus and minus buttons on the right hand side. So I'm going to drag this so the name's in the middle and we're going to zoom in a bit till we can see our friend Augustus. And luckily he's right at the top of the page. Lawson Augustus. So if I drag this down so I can see what these columns are. So our name of person race is Lawson. Christian name is Augustus. Trade or occupation. So Augustus Lawson is a CH boatman. I believe that's a customs house boatman. Is person rated owner, leasee or occupying tenant? O for owner. As you can see, if he was the occupying tenant, if you go down two in the list, we'll see Joseph Roberts and they've written OCK for occupier. So O here stands for owner. Augustus is the owner. And you can also see there's no one else in the owner column showing that Augustus owns the house. Number in street number three, as we know from looking at the Sands and McDougall directories, Augustus Lawson did live at number three, Hotham Street. I'm going to drag this across a little bit further and we can find out some more information. So the house at Hotham Street where Augustus lived was a house. You can see the ditto marks there from the one above it. And that's got four rooms and this W on the side will stand for wood. Depending on the record, because they're all handwritten, they'll have different ways of writing this. They might be writing WD for wood and BK for brick. All kinds of different shorthands that they had. But W here is going to stand for wood. And then you can go across and if you're interested in this, you can see how much he was paying in his annual amount for rates and so forth. So that's the kind of information that you can find out in a rate record about a house. And if you want to save this record, that's very straightforward. You've got this green save button up here and you can either send image home, which will give you the option to have the image emailed to you. You just put in your email address here and press send email. I'll close out of that or alternatively when you click save you can just click save to this computer give it a moment and that's downloaded that directly into my downloads folder depending on the settings on your computer it will save it in a different place the easiest way to find out where it has saved it is to click on this little arrow down here so this is the file which has popped up and this is the file we've just saved I'm going to click on this little arrow here I can click show in folder and that will pull up whatever folder it's chosen to download the file into. So I can see I'm in my downloads folder and the file is right here. If I wanted to, I could open that up with a double click and we can have a look at it there. I'm going to close out of that, close out of my downloads folder and we're going to go back. So I'm using this one in the top left to go back a few and we're going to conduct a new search. So what I'm going to show you here is how you can find information if you haven't managed to find the name of somebody who lived in your home. How you can still discover some information about your house. So in this case you'll need to use the more options button. So I'm going to click on show more options. Now we don't know a name so we're going to leave these two boxes blank. I'm going to put in a place which is going to be Williamstown. And I'll have to scroll down again on the right hand side and choose the correct Williamstown. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the name of the street into keyword. So let's say I was still looking at Augustus's house but I didn't know Augustus had lived there. Put in three Hotham into keyword. Now I'm not going to put street because you never know if a record will say ST or if it will say street or how they might have written that. So it's better to leave it as broad as you can. Just type the name of the street. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to click search and we're going to see if we can find out who may have lived in 3 Hotham Street. So as you can see, we found a few different records. In fact, we found 788 million of them. But the first few records will be the most relevant and an ancestry search will always find less and less relevant records the further you scroll down the list of what it's found. 
So the very first record we found today is about Lillian Lawson and we're looking at 1917 Williamstown North so we know we found the right Hotham Street and this is an electoral roll. So if I hover my mouse over this label here that says electoral roll it will give me a little bit of information. Lillian was a woman living at Hotham Street in 1917 and her occupation was home duty so Lillian was a housewife. I can also click on view image here to pull up a scan of the roll itself. Now you'll have to look around a bit on the page to find who you're looking for and sometimes you'll have to drag the page around a bit. Dragging it down, we've got Lawrence there, I'm going to drag it back up until we see Lawson and here is the Lawson family. Now people will be listed alphabetically which means the family may not be consecutive in the list but they will be quite close together so all the Lawsons are together. And we can see a few of these Lawsons are living in Hotham Street so we've got Lawson Augustus Henry C and he is a customs officer so as you know he was a boatman and C H Boatman on his rate record probably stood for customs house boatman and we can also see that Augustus was male. Um, as we go down further we can see Elizabeth Lawson so she's also working at home, she would be cooking, cleaning, looking after children, these kinds of things. And then we have Lillian Lawson also living at 3 Hotham Street and she's also doing home duties. So Lillian and Elizabeth are at home together while Augustus is working as a boatman. And we could do further research on the family and discover if perhaps one of these women was married to Augustus and the other may have been a daughter or perhaps it was a couple living with a mother-in-law, perhaps it was a group of siblings living together. We have to find out the relationships between these people but at least we know now that it was the Lawson family who lived in the house at 3 Hotham Street and we know a little bit about who they were. Now if I click back up here I can open up my other results and I can get plenty more information. So I could just click view image on any of these and get up some information about what the Lawson family was up to at that time. So I'm going to drag this down a bit and again we can see the Lawson family here so Lillian's still working on home duties, Augustus is still here working as a customs officer and Elizabeth is no longer on the list so it seems like Elizabeth has probably actually moved out of the property and is now living elsewhere. So that's some of the information you can find even if you have no idea what name you're looking for by searching for the name of your street. And once again I could save this document just by clicking the save button up in the top right hand corner here. Now the last place I'm going to show you you can look today is in old newspapers. Newspapers can provide a lot of information about what's happening in a house whether it's being built or demolished or sold if there might have been a birth there or a death there or any of that kind of information. So a lot of old Australian newspapers can be found at a website called Trove and we are very lucky if you're in the Hobson's Bay area that the Williamstown Chronicle is available on Trove and also that many Melbourne newspapers, the Herald, the Age, the Argus, these are all available on Trove. So I'm going to click back up in the top bar here and I'm just going to type in Trove, that's all we need to type. I'm going to press enter. That's taken me straight to the website. It may take you to a Google search, you just want to click on the first link, National Library of Australia, Trove. And today we're going to be looking for newspapers. So I'm going to click on digitise newspapers and more. And we're just going to do a search in this box here. I'm going to click in there for what we might be looking for. You can see what I've searched for in the past. Obviously I researched the history of Williamstown a lot. Um, so you can try different variations such as the name of your street and your suburb, the name of your street and perhaps the family who lived there, any of these things. So I might just start off by typing 3 Hotham Street Williamstown and press enter and we'll see what we get there. Now as you can see that hasn't really pulled up results about my Lawson family that I've been looking at. Instead I'm just seeing general results about Hotham and so forth. So what I might want to do to make this more specific is to put some quotes around 3 Hotham Street. So I'll just put an open quote there and then I'll click after street and we'll put another quote there. And that way we'll only find ones with the phrase 3 Hotham Street, not just the articles you can see popping up here with just the word Hotham in them. So I'm going to press search again and we'll see what we find. Here we go, we're looking at family notices and this says 3 Hotham Street. So let's click on that. 
Now the tricky thing about Trove is you can't always immediately see the article you're looking for. So what I like to do is to press Control F on my keyboard and this little box pops up in the right hand corner here and I type what I'm looking for in there. So in this case I'm looking for Hotham Street. So I'm just going to type Hotham, press enter and on the left hand side here you can see it's taken me down to Hotham. So if I click on Hotham now it will take me in the newspaper to the part of the page which mentions Hotham Street. I'm just going to drag this page down. I can use these buttons on the left hand side to zoom in. Drag this page across so I can see it a bit clearer and now I can read this information and as you can see down the bottom we are talking about 3 Hotham Street and we're talking about the death of Mr. William Elliot Armstrong who obviously lived there and if you look in this top bar here he lived there in February 1939. So we now know that the Armstrong family was living at Hotham Street during that time and that Mr. Armstrong has passed away at this time. And then we could do further research on Mr. Armstrong, try typing Armstrong into the search alongside Hotham Street and seeing what came up there. Now there's a few different ways to save one of these newspaper articles if you're interested in them. And the easiest way is with this little arrow on the left hand side here, this little arrow pointing down, which is almost always the symbol to download. So if I press that button, we get some different options. So I can save it as a JPEG file, which is an image file, a PDF, which is a page that you can't edit, or a text file, which is a page that you can edit as in a Microsoft Word document. I prefer to save mine as images, so I'm just going to press JPEG and it will automatically prepare you a medium sized JPEG and if you want you can click on change size and choose a larger size which will give you a better quality image, but medium is pretty good. So I'm just going to click view medium JPEG here and there's my image. Now it's downloaded a few of the articles on either side but if I just scroll down I can see that my article that I want is there. So I'm going to right click on that image and I'm going to save this image and I want to capture as much information as I can to remember where I got this. So I might call this for example Williamstown Chronicle, which health record spell Chronicle, 11 February 1939, 3 Hotham Street. That way I have all that information there and I know what this file is. I'll just press save and that's on my desktop whenever I want to go back and have a look at that. So there you go, that is just the beginning of the kind of research you can do on your house and as you can see from this little video there's a lot of information out there and a lot you can discover without even leaving your home. If you do want to find some more information and you hit a roadblock you can also get in contact with our heritage team and you should see our email address appearing here on the screen heritage at hobsonsbay.vic.gov.au and you can submit an inquiry about your research to us or you can just ask us for some advice on where to look next or anything like that. If you have any questions about what's in this video or want any more information about how to go out or want any more information about how to go about searching, also feel free to get in touch. We would love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching and best of luck with your research.